I want to go live in the land down under, somewhere deep in the heart of outback Australia, said literally no one ever. Why would you consciously choose to live somewhere where it feels like everything has been designed to suck the life right out of you, leaving just your bones behind? Heck, even your bones would probably get chewed up by some 5 meter croc. Sorry Americans, we use the metric system on this channel. Home to many things that can kill you, Australia is abundant with spiders. However, today we're not looking at how they can kill us, but instead how we can get our revenge by studying their spider silk and using it to our advantage. Lucky for you, you've come to Atomic Stories, and today we will give an explanation to the chemical structure of spider silk proteins and how we can use them for applications in textiles, tissue engineering, and as neuron scaffolds. So let's jump right in and get into the video. Winter jackets are simply just great. They keep you warm and cozy during the cold winter months, but they also have so much storage. In fact, I usually go to my exams wearing only my winter jacket, having my calculator in a pocket close to my chest, ruler in my pocket, and a crap load of pens all over. However, climate change continues to be a persistent problem. Roll the clips of recent fires in Europe and Hawaii. We have to become more sustainable in every aspect of our lives, including our clothing. This is where these little demon arachnids come into play. If you're a fan of the North Face, then you might as well become a fan of Japanese-based company Spiber. Spiber essentially spend time studying the protein structure of many different spider proteins because, as it turns out, different spider species produce different silk. This is due to spiders evolving over time as different species need different silks to survive in their environment. Spiber's team of scientists then compiled a database of all the various silks they studied and made their own variants using recombinant techniques, and we'll explain what that means later in this video. Spiber calls their engineered spider silk as brew protein, and the way that they produce them is actually quite novel and sustainable. Rebecca Cairns published an article in CNN Business where she conducted an interview with the scientists and team behind Spiber. It turns out that the reason they call their fabrics brewed proteins is because they use a fermentation technique where they mix and brew plant-based materials along with specially modified microbes in steel tanks similar to those used in the production of beer. Beer facts aside, this process results in the production of polymers, and then through special techniques, these polymers can be converted into textiles that we know such as fibers, yarn, or denim. Having discovered Spiber, the North Face asked for a collaboration where they would design a parka made out of recombinant spider silk. The result was these two winter jackets. Let us know in the comments which one you would choose. Other than picking our favorite winter jackets, we would also like to encourage our viewers to take example of Spiber and to use your skills and knowledge to make a positive change, much like they have. Picture this, Spider-Man swinging through New York City, shooting his webs everywhere, right? Well, spider silk is like the superhero version of natural fibers. Natural fibers have a whole plethora of superpowers. First off, they're environmentally and human-friendly materials, meaning there ain't no toxic stuff here, folks. Plus, they're all about sustainability and they also help us fight the dreaded CO2 monster. In this part of the video, we will be discussing the chemical structure of spider silk and the properties that emerge due to its structure. First of all, spiders are excellent examples of natural extruders who spin a copolymer. Most spider silk proteins are encoded by members of the spidroin gene family and their structure can be understood with the following figure. Each white block constitutes a module that is composed of a range of amino acids which together form functional motifs. Functional motifs are secondary structures that are formed and in the context of spider silk, the secondary motifs are beta sheets or beta spirals, which are important contributors to the crystallinity of spider silk. These beta sheets then stack together, resulting in the formation of nanocrystals and hydrophobic interactions that trap hydrogen bonds in the crystal lattice, giving large strength to the nanocrystals. Other than functional motives being formed, there are also regions rich in glycine, which contribute to the flexibility of spider silk. This is great because when combined with the highly crystalline regions, a material which is both strong and flexible is produced. This is why various spider silks can match the tensile strength of steel, absorb more kinetic energy before rupturing than Kevlar, or reversibly stretch almost as far as rubber. As we've said, spider silk is a wondrous material, being stronger than steel and more flexible than a gymnast. But harvesting it from natural sources? Forget about it. The amounts you'd get would be woefully inadequate as these little demon arachnids are cannibals and would eat each other before we gain much of their silk. Enter the world of biotechnology production, providing larger quantities of this silk through a process known as recombinant production. So let us understand the blueprint first. 
The key to all of this is the DNA sequence of the spider silk, which is determined and then used to design recombinant DNA. Imagine it as a blueprint of a masterpiece, with various sequences taken from spiders like Nephilia clavipes or Arrhenius diadematis. Figure 1 on screen gives us a fascinating schematic illustration of the entire process. And now that we have an idea of the blueprint, we have to go on and explain the production line. The recombinant production of silk goes through six specific stages. The first is natural DNA sequence determination. And here we identify the very code of life that makes spider silk possible. Next is the recombinant DNA design, where we modify that code to suit our needs. Once that is done, we can clone the DNA in a vector, transferring the DNA into a suitable vessel. This vessel can then be used in step four, being placed in a host organism like bacteria, where E. coli is a favorite, we'll get into why shortly, yeast or insect cells to produce the proteins. When the host cell integrate the DNA into their own genome, they're said to be transformed. And what we do in step five is simply culturing the cells for protein production, as the transformed cells have the optimal environment for protein growth. Finally, after five difficult steps, we reach protein purification, where we get rid of unwanted elements to isolate the spider silk protein. This stage involves separation techniques like centrifugation or filtration to remove contaminants, followed by chromatography to specifically isolate the protein. Now, as promised, let us explain why E. coli is favored. The use of E. coli as a host organism is often favored due to its fast growth kinetics, high cell density, and easy transformation. This little bacteria is like sprinter of the biological world, growing quickly and allowing us to harvest the proteins in record times. While this is all great, we have identified our DNA, modified it to our needs, and had bacteria do the dirty work of producing it for us, but it's unfortunately not that simple. So let's get into the challenges and the triumphs. One of the major issues is the issue of codon usage discrepancy between spiders and host organisms. This means that the genetic code for certain amino acids in spiders might be different from that of the host organisms like E. coli. If not aligned properly, this can lead to errors in the translation of the genetic code into the proteins we desire. Plus, bacterial hosts like E. coli can remove repetitive sequences, necessitating optimization through engineered, double-stranded DNA with adjusted bacterial codon usage. Researchers like Humeric et al. successfully produced MASP2 spider silk proteins using E. coli as a host, engineering variants with varying lengths and core repeats. The result? Sufficient yields of spider silk proteins ready for use. Continuing, we have mentioned that we can modify the spider silk to our desires. What do the modifications look like? What we're talking about here is the incorporation of functional peptides like RGD, which is a peptide motive for cell adhesion, for enhanced cell interactions or amino acids that allow subsequent chemical modifications. These manipulations have led to innovations like EADF4C16, a negatively charged variant that can be improved for cell attachment through functionalization with cell binding peptides. More of these possibilities can be found in specialized reviews. So after mentioning all of the potentials and the drawbacks, what is the future of spider silk? We're now able to create silk with tunable properties for a wide range of applications, including tissue engineering. From fibers and films to hydrogels and non-woven meshes, the potential is massive. So dear viewers, the next time you think of spider silk, don't just picture the cobwebs in your basement. Think of the engineering marbles, the groundbreaking medical applications, and the sustainable future these eight-legged creatures are enabling us to weave. And to think, this all started with a few scientists looking closely at what many consider a simple pest. How's that for a twist in the web? We have thus far promised you guys many different applications and already showed you one with Spiber. But let's take a look at some more. So welcome to the future of tissue engineering. Recombinant spider silk hybrid scaffolds. It sounds like science fiction, but it's a reality that's transforming the field of tissue engineering. Let's dig into this amazing paper titled Recombinant Spider Silk Silica Hybrid Scaffolds with Drug-Releasing Properties for Tissue Engineering Applications and discover how this innovation is changing lives. Firstly, there is a growing concern. Biomedical implants and devices facing bacterial infection can lead to their failure. But what if antibiotics aren't enough? With drug-resistant strains and insufficient concentrations at infection sites, we need a new solution. That's where recombinant spider silk comes into play. Scientists have spun a fascinating answer. Composite materials made of recombinant spider silk proteins and mesoporous silicon nanoparticles loaded with antibiotics and antimycotics. Imagine, dear viewers, a future where infections on biomedical implants are nothing but a distant memory. How do these work? These composite materials release antibiotics for 15 days, showing unparalleled antimicrobial properties without harming human cells. 
What's even more thrilling? 3D printing enables personalized antimicrobial implants, paving the way for infection-free medical devices. And all of this sounds quite nice, doesn't it? An infection-free future. However, challenges and triumphs continue to exist. Optimization of these materials, the long-term effects, and the cost of production are among the hurdles yet to be overcome. However, the path is clear, and the research community is hard at work ensuring the safety and efficiency of this technology. So therefore, the recombinant spider silk silica hybrid scaffolds are not just a brilliant scientific invention, but they also represent hope, innovation, and a promise of a better healthcare. From fibers to films, and now to medical marvel, spider silk continues to amaze us with its potentials. Welcome back to our Outback adventure. We've been diving deep into the world of spiders, not looking at their lethal side, but rather at how we can learn from them to improve our own lives. Remember when we mentioned the super strength of spider silk? Strong as steel, tougher than Kevlar? This material's power isn't limited to physical prowess. It also plays a pivotal role in the complex world of human body regeneration. Axonal regeneration is the process where damaged nerves try to repair themselves. Imagine it like a road with a massive crater in it. Traffic set a standstill, right? Historically, the gap length, or the distance, that these nerves need to grow across has often been too large for our medical interventions. Most existing nerve guidance conduits, or NGCs, can only support gaps of up to 30 millimeters and are designed for small diameter nerves. But the ingenious properties of spider silk and our relentless innovation have pushed these limits. Scientists have created tubular structures filled with guiding fibers or microchannels, and even encapsulated growth factors, providing a clear pathway for nerve growth. A study by Ratke et al. made a breakthrough in this regard. They used decellularized vein grafts filled with natural spider silk fibers from the Philae clavipes as a guiding material to bridge a whopping 6 centimeter model defect in the tibial nerve of adult sheep. The cultured human neurons on the silk fibers exhibited significant adhesion and migration of cell bodies, as well as differentiation and extending neurites formed ganglion-like cell structures. This marked a major stride in overcoming the challenge of the gap length. But the successes didn't stop there. The electrophysiological analysis of these structures showed an amazing revelation. The effectiveness of the fabricated constructs was indistinguishable from that of autologous nerve transplants, the current gold standard in peripheral nerve injury treatments. With these highways in place, nerve cells, or neurons, begin their journey across the bridge, setting up their own little communities along the way. Schwann cells, the construction crew of the nerve world, also come into play. They wrap around nerve fibers, forming a protective layer called myelin, acting like a turbo boost for your nerves, speeding up the transmission of electrical signals. The result? Regenerated, myelinated axons throughout the spider silk constructs within just a few months, creating a fully functioning nerve highway. Spider silk's role in creating a network of neurons and interacting effectively with stem cells has been instrumental. It fosters the growth of blood vessels, providing a complete ecosystem for nerve regeneration. In the complex landscape of our bodies, where everything seems to be working against these nerve cells, spider silk offers a lifeline, enabling them to thrive and function again. The extraordinary abilities of spider silk could revolutionize how we approach treatment for peripheral nerve injuries, potentially changing countless lives for the better. Congratulations! You have successfully beat our video and made it to the end. And if we could, we would give you a reward for your efforts. We would like to give a big thank you for watching our videos and supporting our little channel. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and giving us a like and also drop some comments, letting us know what you liked and didn't like as we are open to all suggestions. Before we end, however, we would like to send our best wishes to the people and animals affected by the recent fires in both Europe and Hawaii. If you would like to help out, please see the resources at the bottom of our video. Whilst we are a small channel, we would still like to try and do something to help with our small community. Thank you.